Welcome everyone to our service of morning prayer in the Chapel of the Holy Spirit on this All Saints Sunday. I'm so glad you joined us today. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. And the Vanity is found on page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The psalm is Psalm one is Psalm one sorry. The psalm is Psalm thirty four. I will bless the Lord at all times, his praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord, let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord, let us exalt his name forever. I sought the Lord and he answered me, and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints. For those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Revelation. I looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, 
standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. The second reading is from 1 John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him Purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. And after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you, When people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account, rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, once again, happy All Saints Sunday to you. I'm so glad you joined us. It's estimated that more than 231 million Americans celebrated Halloween this year, and that's about 70% of everyone in America. 
Now, total spending on Halloween this year will likely reach $12.2 billion. That's billion with a B. <laughs> and here are some fun facts. The top children's costume for 2023, can you guess what it is? It's Barbie. The top adult costume, a witch. I don't think that's changed much over the years. And the top pet costume, a pumpkin. Now, I've had plenty of pets over the years, but I'm at a loss as to why people dress their pets up as pumpkins. Um, perhaps someone might enlighten me on that one. And by the way, it's estimated that $700 million this year was spent on pet costumes alone. So is Halloween a big deal in America or what? In fact, I found out years ago as a priest in a church outside of Charleston that there's one day a year that you never want to mess with. One day a year when you don't want to schedule a meeting, a Bible study, a Bible class, or any kind of religious event. Do you know what that day is? It's, it's Halloween. <laughs> and I learned that the hard way. So Halloween seems to get all the press these days. And it's interesting, when you look up Halloween online to find out perhaps its origin and history, most sites will tell you about its pagan connections and overtones, but few will tell you how it relates to the Christian church. Halloween, or All Hallows' Eve, comes from the word hallow, which means holy. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, what? Hallowed be thy name. It's the same word. All Hallows' Eve, All Holy Eve, was originally a time of preparation for All Saints' Day on the following day, November 1st. Hundreds of years ago, of course, the focus was not on the evening of preparation leading up to All Saints' Day. The focus was on All Saints' Day itself. And now we see how things have changed in that regard. So today we celebrate All Saints Sunday. Uh, this past Wednesday was All Saints Day, November 1st. And All Saints was first celebrated by a relatively small number of Christians in the East in the fourth century on that first Sunday after Pentecost. It wasn't until the ninth century that the Pope ordered the Feast of All Saints to be universally observed by all Christians everywhere on the date of November 1st. In the early church, believers honored and remembered all those Christians who were martyred for their faith. And later, All Saints turned into a time to remember all the saints who've gone before, no matter how they died, by martyrdom or natural causes or some other way. Now, when you think of a saint, who comes to mind? Of course, there are biblical saints like St. Saint Paul and St. Mary, St. John. In the history of the church, there are well-known saints like St. Saint Augustine or St. Augustine or St. Francis of Assisi. And you even have special classifications of saints, like patron saints, who are chosen as kind of guardians over areas of life. And there are also saints like St. Joseph, who you can bury upside down in your garden if you want to sell your home, or at least that's what some people believe. And some contend that it really works. The Catholic Church has recognized several thousand people as saints. And in the Catholic Church, there is a lot that goes into becoming a saint. In order to be recognized as a saint, you need to meet the following criteria. Number one, and most basically, you need to be dead. <laughs> so, sorry, no one alive is eligible to apply. Number two, a local bishop will investigate your life and writings to see if there is evidence of heroic virtue. And then the bishop sends this evidence on to the Vatican. And a panel of theologians and Cardinals is then formed to evaluate your life. If you're approved, you get the classification of venerable. The next step is beatification. 
In order to reach this level, there needs to be conclusive evidence that you have performed not one, but two miracles. Now, if you've been martyred, then you're exempt from this step. And so, as you can see, the Catholic Church has some pretty rigorous criteria for sainthood. But good news, meeting the biblical criteria for sainthood in the New Testament is much, much easier. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. Paul addresses the church of God in Corinth who are saints. And Paul tells King Agrippa in Acts 26 that before he became a follower of Jesus, he locked up many of the saints in prison. Paul writes to the Christians in Rome, to all who are beloved of God in Rome, called as saints. And Paul addresses several other letters to the saints who are at Ephesus, who are faithful in Christ Jesus. And then to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi. And then to the saints in Christ who are at Colossae. And Paul tells the Romans that Christians should be contributing to the needs of the saints in Jerusalem. And John begins the book of Revelation by telling the church that Christ has made us to be a kingdom of priests, to serve his God and Father. And so here is the reality. All believers in Jesus, without exception, according to the New Testament, are saints. If you're a follower of Jesus, if you're a Christian, then that is fundamentally who you are. That's your identity in Christ. The question is, how does one become a saint? Again, biblically speaking. So let's take a brief look at our reading, the first reading we had today that Patsy read in Revelation chapter 7. And Revelation 7 provides us with one of those rare instances in the Bible in which we're privileged to get kind of a glimpse into heaven. And so what do we see? Well, John tells us, we see not just a few people or even a few thousand, but he sees a great multitude that no one can count. In other words, perhaps millions upon millions of people. And John says they're from every nation, tribe, people, and language. And the fact is, if you look at many of our churches today, you tend to see, in many cases, people who look just like one another. However, John tells us there's going to be tremendous diversity in heaven. Black, white, brown, red, yellow, standing before the throne of God and before the Lamb. And we see these saints wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Now, white is a symbol for purity and holiness in the Bible. And palm branches in their hands, that's a symbol for victory. Well, why are they victorious? And the answer is because they've overcome the world. They've remained faithful to Christ and haven't denied him, even as times got hard. And so these believers, victorious and holy, are standing in the presence of God and singing praises to God. And then John tells us something critically important. He tells us how these saints standing before God got these white robes. He says they have washed their robes and made them white. How? In the blood of the Lamb. And this is my favorite image in the entire Bible. In the natural, physical realm, we don't get things white with blood, do we? And the last time I checked, blood stains garments red, not white. But you see, John is not talking about our physical clothes. He's talking about our souls. He's saying the blood of Jesus shed on the cross for you and for me 2,000 years ago makes our souls white. He makes them pure and holy. But notice how John says the spiritual cleansing is to take place. It's not only something that God does for us in Jesus. It's something that we actively participate in as well. Again, notice it says they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. In other words, there is an action step that you need to take in order to be declared holy and righteous before God and to be declared a saint. 
You see, it's not good enough to simply know or even acknowledge in your mind that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world a long time ago. You need to apply that holy work of long ago to your life today. You need to receive it and make it your own. Another way of saying it is that when we willingly offer to God by faith our messy, sin-stained robes, he freely and joyfully in return will give us robes that are washed clean. You see, this is the great irony about the pathway to sainthood. In order for you, in order for me, in order for anyone to become a saint, we have to admit first that we're sinners who consistently fall short of God's holy standards for our lives and that no amount of good deeds are capable of saving us and restoring us to a right relationship with God. In order to become a saint, I have to acknowledge my total and utter need before God and my dependence on him. So it may seem counterintuitive, but the, primary, but the pathway to biblical sainthood includes admitting that we don't measure up and will never measure up, at least spiritually speaking, apart from God's forgiveness, mercy, and kindness in our lives. So friends, you need not be concerned if you can't find evidence in your life of a miracle or two. You need not have anxiety that a team of religious people might find things from your past that you've said or done that you might be ashamed of. That doesn't matter. Why? Because if you're a follower of Jesus, and if his Holy Spirit lives within you, and if you've made God's forgiveness your own, you can be certain that one day you will stand arm in arm with the multitude of saints before God, with a very special robe that has been washed white by the blood of the Lamb. And so happy All Saints Sunday to all the saints, to those living saints faithfully serving Christ here on earth, and to those who've gone before, who now dwell in the nearer presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Canticle 9, found on page 86. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And then a song to the Lamb, it's Canticle 18. It's found on page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God, for you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood, you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, 
forever and forevermore. The Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And may we pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And Suffrages B, page 98. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night, and turns the shadow of death into the morning. Drive far from us all wrong desires. Incline our hearts to keep your law. And guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. And so clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name, amen. And one of our customs on All Saints Day and All Saints Sunday is to actually read the names, lift up the names of those in the Still Hopes community who've died within the past year, from November of 2022 to November of 2023. So Patsy will come, and that's what she'll do now. We remember Elizabeth Todd, Charles Bundy, James Geddes, Chuck Hausman, Jean Knudsen, Margaret Twomey, Robert Stearns, Nancy Lipton, Henrietta Van Ardstall, Martha Shippey, George Ross, Jackie Williams, David Wilde, Joe James, Virginia Holland, Betty Brockington, Peggy Harrelson, Ian Thompson, Susan Heron, Shell Suber, Mary Kennard, Lloyd Hendricks, Iris Effenbean, Henry Shaw, Pauline Rogers, William Douglas, Douglas King, Benjamin Woodruff, Emily Israel, Jack, Jacqueline Hatch, 
Tom Jones, Ann Callison, Susan Gillespie, Robert Hill, Margaret Wimbert, Marjorie Stearns, Alberto Alvarez, Sandra Tuller, and Mary Lou Price. The general thanksgiving is found on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>